Hello everyone and welcome to a tutorial. My name is Paul. I am the CEO and founder of Sparktoast. And today we are going to be going over the new Apollo panel, how it works and how to use it and going over the new features and, and yeah, pretty simple. Pretty simple stuff. So quickly here. I just ordered a test server um, and you'll, you know, when you order, you have this go to panel button. So you can go there, press that, and it'll bring you here. Now, as you notice, uh, this doesn't look any different at all. Uh, that is because the new panel is still on beta. So you need to press here, okay, and you may need to log in again, and it'll bring you here. Now, let's go to our server, and we're gonna go over some things. All right. So first off, obviously you want to install a, a server version. We haven't run the default version it installed, so let's go over to the new, um, new feature. You can install a, a version automatically, and boom, it updates your jar. All right. Now, when you are using when you're using Windows 17, you need to use Java 16. So it'll give you an option if, if it detects that you're using the wrong version, and you'll need to update it. And as you can see here, it updates it. Otherwise, if sometimes maybe it doesn't update it, you can go to startup, and you can set the Java 16 here. Um, lower XMX is for possibly, you know, just making it have a lower, higher RAM that it can use so it doesn't crash earlier. Anyways, you need to agree to the EULA, as I call it. Um, so I'm going to restart the server here. Let's go over some things here. Um, databases. Go over databases quickly. Um, so you have the option, just like all, just like the regular panel, to put where your where your database is. The abbreviation of the location kind of tells you. EU is Europe, New York City, um, Australia, Miami, Florida, Dallas, Texas, Los Angeles, and Singapore. <clears throat> That's pretty simple. Um, I'll make one here and you can view all your details just like normal you can go to PHP of my admin just like normal nothing really changes here at all um, schedules exactly the same um, you basically can just make a new schedule and uh, yeah we have other tutorials on how to do that Adding a new user, there's new permissions out of this. Um, there's audit logs, there's the mods, versions. Um, so yeah, there's new stuff out of this. Uh, in terms of permissions, there are new permissions out. Um, backups are the same. You just create a backup. It's pretty easy. And it creates pretty fast for the most part. If it's under like, you know, 200 megabytes. So the mains are generally the same as well. Um, you know, just create one, and you know it'll work. You can copy it to your clipboard, and yeah, I mean you can go over to MC Service Tennis and just quickly check out. It's working, uh, as you can see. So yeah, file manager is also basically the same. You can delete, you know, you can see the permissions, you can move stuff, rename, archive. You can reset your world though. There, This is a new button. It, it'll just kind of delete your worlds. So be careful with that, but it'll give you, uh, you have to confirm it twice. So that's, that's cool. Audit logs, it, it tells you generally what happened, when it happened, doesn't tell you the IP address yet. Um, 
tells you user ID. But yeah, it, this is going to be improving, but it tells you what has happened. And it's good to know, like, if one of your sub users might have deleted files. Um, yeah, pretty simple. Um, so let's go back to backups here. Our backup's done. You can press download it. You can download it. You can also lock it, which means like sub users can't really delete it um, without unlocking it, or they might not even have perms to even unlock it. But <clears throat> restoring this, it, it does it pretty fast. And it just takes you back. And you just simply go to go back to where we took the backup from. All right, guys, welcome back. The backup has restored. It was glitched. Um, you just have to make sure you stop your server before you restore it, or else it might glitch. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, let's get back to what we were doing. We will move on now to the importer. Importer is generally pretty simple. You just kind of need to remember a few things. You can only use this for SFTP connections right now. So for example though, this right here will work. And uh, let's just say we're putting in the host here. You put in the regular username, password. Base path. This makes sure this tells you this basically says if you want to delete your files on your server, on your Spark server, before you import basically. So be careful on that. Anyways, this is the only option here that you need to be careful about because you need to remove the port and the SFTP colon slash slash. You only want the domain or IP. Uh, that is it. This is already the port which is already fine. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Just make sure you remove the port and the the F SFTP clone slash slash before it. Versions, uh, we already went over this, but one thing is don't delete files. You can select this if you don't want it to delete the other files. On, but if you want it to delete everything and only install the jar, you can put it on this and then we're going to install and then it'll delete everything and only install the jar. The, the GUI user interface for this will change a bit and be more organized. Um, however, we do not know when that'll be. Mod packs. This takes a little load because it uses Chris Forge's API. However, as you can see here, there's a lot of mods lots of mods and if you try to um, go to like the end it, it'll be a little, a little laggy anyways I'm gonna delete my files and I'm gonna test install a mod pack um, let's just use this for now and I'm just gonna go over this I'm not sure how long this will take to install so we'll let that run <clears throat> Let's go to network. Network, you can create extra ports here, write a note on what your servers are, or what the port is used for. Um, so you can be like, go to, go to fire and do map. Pretty simple. Primary is this is the port that your server uses for connection on multiplayer, so just know that. <clears throat> Mod pack is already done installing. All right, so when you when a mod pack installs, it'll install in a folder like this. You'll need to move the files up um, a folder. Okay, it just it seems like this one didn't install correctly. However, basically it'll install in a folder like this, and you'll need to use FileZilla FTP to move it up, or this. But this is a little glitchy. It doesn't really give you an option to move files. Um, it's kind of weird, but yeah, unfortunately, it is what it is. <clears throat> what else is there? We got to go to startup. He already went over this a little, but you can use Java 16 or default Java. We recommend only Java 16 and default Java. There's no reason to use anything else for the most part. 
Um, especially if you're on Forge, you should only use default Java unless you're on 1.17 and you have to use Java 16. However, there will be issues if you use anything other than default Java on Forge because commands and console won't work. So use default Java, not Java 8 here. And then lower XMX is if you have a bigger server, kind of like 4 gigabytes, 5 gigabytes, and it's kind of crashing early, you can try and see if this makes it crash less. <coughs> Settings. Went over this a bit, but this is FTP details for FileZilla. Um, you copy it, and you can copy everything. Panel password tells you it's different in the billing area, which you can log in via billing. And it's just just know the password is not if it's for billing area the billing area password if you use billing area to log in it won't work so yeah uh, you can also launch FC, SFTP which works with win SCP um, I use FileZilla personally but yeah <clears throat> clean up server this kind of cleans up um, some files and yeah it's pretty simple Reinstall server, it reinstalls it to the default state, which there's really no point to do that if you just delete it and then just or use the versions uh, tab. Uh, the debug, de debug stuff is for like if you have like a ticket open, you know, give them the server ID. Um, that's all. Upgrade button this is this if, if you want to upgrade your server. Um, you don't need to make a ticket. For the most part, you really just need to basically go to your services and then press on one and upgrade. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Um, and uh, yeah, there's really nothing <coughs> else. For me to talk about that's that's basically the panel that's how it is that's basically what it is and yeah i mean the only other thing i can go over here is login via door which it just takes you to the billing page and you have to verify something and yeah i don't really recommend using it because of FileZilla, but yeah that's basically it though for this tutorial i appreciate you guys tuning in and I'm, I hope that this video helped you guys at least somehow learn how this panel works. And it's also really, um, as you can see, it's, it's very good looking. So yeah, that's it for the video. You know, comment down below if you have questions and user support team as well. My name is Paul and I am peacing out.